Hello everyone, my name is Rob, welcome to Kinetic Rugby League. In this video I'll be giving you my Super League Round 7 Power Rankings. There's a few changes to kind of the middle, not too many changes to the bottom and top of last week, but in the middle it's certainly getting very, very close. But let's crack on with 12th place. So starting in 12th place and staying in 12th place from last episode is London Broncos. They are just significantly off the mark. I understand that people will want to talk about Hull FC, I get that, but in terms of competitiveness from London, I haven't seen anything from them in the last couple of weeks to justify even putting them above Hull FC, even as bad as they've been. So there was a period early on I thought they'd adjust quickly given the teams that they had to play against, St Helens, Catalans, Wigan, Warrington very early on. We kind of saw that against Hull FC that, you know, after a few a few big games to help them get up to speed with everything, that they could then compete with some of the worst teams in Super League, but they're just not they're just not really pushing anyone. Do kind of need to see him against Castleford, Hull again, maybe Lee. But I can't see when and where they're going to pick up this first win. Maybe against Hull FC. But yeah, London Broncos in 12th. Moving on to 11th place now, and still in 11th place, I have Hull FC. As I said regarding London Broncos. You know, they've been poor, Hull FC has been poor, but yeah, I can't justify putting them bottom yet, even though a lot of people would certainly have them there. The only things that save them, really, I think there were some stints against Catalans a few weeks ago where they looked to challenge. I think their performance against Warrington, especially 13 on 13 in round two, even though, you know, that was a little while ago at this point, had some semblance of fight, whereas London Broncos in their two games against Warrington just had nothing for them. Um, and the fact that Hull FC beat London is another key reason to keep them above them. They are a really poor team. You know, you look at the players that they've got, you'd expect something from them. Like, that forward pack is really big, so you'd think that maybe they could dominate through the middle, wear teams out a bit. That's not really happening. In terms of how easy they are to open up defensively, it is ridiculous. So, the ability... For teams to get such easy field position against them is ridiculous. And then they can't even get out of their own 10, 20 um, on a regular basis. Like They're just stuck there and they're constantly losing the field position battle. And they just don't have a leader at number 7 to just drive that whole team. They have some good individuals in there, but it's just not, it's just not working out. So, Hull FC in 11th. Moving on to 10th place now, and still in 10th place, Casford Tigers. Big step up this week. Really, really big step up. I've seen a few things from them this season. Of course, they had a competitive effort against Salford in round two. I think their round three performance against Warrington showed some decent signs. In attack, they troubled Warrington, especially down Warrington's right-hand side defensively. So they've had a few moments there. They have still been way off the mark from the, the midfield teams, but... I have seen some good things. Wasn't expecting this kind of win, but I guess it's you know it's good for the cast fans to see that they are building towards something. This you know they might not get another win for another four or five weeks now, but I have seen enough from Castleford to keep them well away from Hull FC in London. Like there, there's a huge gap between them now, but for me there's still a very significant gap to ninth place. So we'll get on to ninth place now. And in ninth place, moving down one, I have Lee Leopards. I've kind of talked about this with other teams, especially in the last video. When you play against Wigan or St. Helens, like it's not the end of the world if you lose the game. And teams are gonna get battered, like that's gonna happen. But it's not just that game against Wigan. It's a few other games as well. Lee has just been a bit off the mark this year. Um, they're not the same as they were, they are still dealing with some injuries and depth is still going to be an issue. So I think maybe next year if they can, you know, if they don't have to deal with so many injuries, and if they, you know, bulk up the squad a bit more, hopefully they'll be better off for the course of a season. And once they have everyone back, especially Aparpe, he's going to be huge for that team. But, yeah, Lee, you just... I don't think the gap to the rest of the midfield is particularly big. I think they will compete with most teams in in the midfield and will have a few decent moments against Wigan 
and Saints and other teams, you know, higher up like Warrington or KL Leeds, example. So, for example, so um, yeah, it's a tough start to the season for Lee. I don't see it going completely downhill for the rest of the season. I think they'll certainly pick up some more wins, not just against the bottom three, but they will compete against those midfield teams. But right now, Lee Leopards down in ninth. Moving on to 8th place now, we're moving up one this week, I have Huddersfield Giants. They have sort of found some consistency, I think we kind of saw week to week in the first few rounds that it was completely up and down, but we knew that they had the potential to really dominate teams and and blow them away, and they've done it again. Yes, it's, you know, Hull FC, um, you know, is going to be an easy enough opponent for most teams, but Huddersfield are kind of, they're building, they've got good individuals in that squad the spine is still fairly new but you know on paper that team is strong they had issues with consistency but if they can start to pick up a few more wins on the bounce you know leads in the next round of super league is going to be a real tough test for them um and i think it'll be a really good indication of where they are whether they are still um to be taken seriously as a playoff contender at least so even though they're down in eighth it doesn't seem like they're like in the fight but the difference between teams from even from lee to probably fourth or fifth place is really close at the moment but huddersfield making improvements week to week building consistency they can keep going i can see them rising up this ladder if i'm honest they just got to get consistent on to seventh place now and moving down to i have sulfur red devils Given expectations, I don't think they should have been losing that game against Castleford. Yes, I mentioned you know, the positives about Castleford, but I don't think Salford should have been losing that game. That is one reason, and another reason is taking into account their Challenge Cup game against Hull Kingston Rovers. They were so far off. I tried to give them a bit of leniency because of other performances around that were still strong, including the game against Wigan, but that is now further into the past and more towards the present I think it's worth moving Salford down. You take into account the Challenge Cup game plus this game. Maybe moving them down two is a little bit harsh. But looking at the opponents that have been played and the types of performances, it could have been a lot more clinical. So yes, it might be unfair. But Salford, I think, will still compete. As I said about um, Lee and Huddersfield, they will still compete with most teams in this league. They'll dominate the bottom three. Typically, although that didn't happen, they'll dominate the bottom two, I should say. Um, they will compete with other midfield teams and they will pose a challenge towards Wigan and Saints. But yeah, it's been an up and down couple weeks. It's not been perfect, but I still think they're a strong team that will will give some teams a headache. Moving on to sixth place now and moving down to I have the Leeds Rhinos. I think... I think they're still a decent team. I will say that. They are still a decent team. And they've had some really tough games recently. They've played against a Warrington team last time out. That's made improvements week to week. That's had a few challenges. Catalans twice and, and Hull KR. But Warrington were just really on it. But they've played St. Helens twice as well. Challenge Cup and Super League. And I think they've been fairly competitive in those games. They played against Catalans and beat them. Um, they played uh, Salford at the start of the season and beat them. Yes, it was a, you know, they were helped by a, a sin bin in there. But Leeds for me is still a decent team. Maybe moving them down to is harsh, but I think just given results, in terms of results, like if they just lost to Warrington, and I would have assumed that would be a very close game if they did lose, then maybe they'd still be ahead of Warrington. But I think given the actual, the gap, the results plus the gap, it does give justification to drop them even lower. So I think minus two is a little bit harsh. Same with Salford, but just given results, that last time out against Warrington was unacceptable. So leads down to in sixth. Moving on to fifth place now and moving up to are the Warrington Wolves. I'm a Wire fan, so I want to be very careful about... Um, adjustments to these i was originally going to move warrington up one and leeds would stay above them 
But to try to justify this, so first of all, just because one team beats another, it doesn't mean they swap. So if London was to beat St. Helens, um, like in the next round of Super League, because I had St. Helens top of my power rankings last week, they don't swap. They don't just swap position because one team beats another. But a few reasons for this. One, Warrington have been on some great form recently. You know, you look at the performances against London. Yes, a lot of people will say it's just London, but it was complete and utter dominance. Then the game against Catalans, people will say, well, that was shaky, understandable. 18-0 down in the first 15 minutes. I will say from that point on, when it became a more typical game of Rugby League, Warrington were firmly in that game and were the better team for large portions after that first 15 minutes. But, of course, you have to take into account those 15, those 15 minutes. And then to be completely dominant against Leeds, for me, so that plus the rest of the game against Catalans, plus the dominance against London, plus the win against Hull KR, for me justifies moving them above Leeds. And I was really high on Leeds a few weeks back. I think I had them as maybe as high as fourth. I don't think they ever hit third. I'm not too sure. But yeah, just the fact that they were so clinical and defensively so strong for me is enough reason to move them up and I, I, as I said I want to be careful about being biased about Warrington and, and moving them up too high but I think it is justifiable to move them up to 5th taking a look at 4th place now and moving up to are the Catalans Dragons they have been an exceptional team the last couple of weeks I have mentioned in previous weeks that their performances against Castleford and Hull FC I don't think were perfect and they were a little bit sluggish in attack but we saw against Warrington they created opportunities very easily and Jordan Abdul really controlled that game uh, with his kick in. And in terms of pinning Warrington back, they were excellent. Um, and another huge win against St. Helens. Obviously, St. Helens haven't been perfect. No one has been perfect. But St. Helens were, of course, number one in my power rankings last week. Um, just all round really strong team. And week to week, the same as last season, Catalans just seem to be dealing with injuries or suspensions and changes to their team. But they deal with them extremely well. So, is that testament to the overall squad, that next man up mentality? Is it testament to Steve McNamara? I think it's both. Both have to be credited severely for that. And it's just um, that feeling, that culture around Catalans is that they have that next man up mentality. If Artem Morg is gone, then Rouge is in his place. Um, if Jordan Abdul is out, maybe Artem Morg takes that position, Theo Farge steps up. Like, they just, they have a real solid group of professionals in there that work extremely hard. There's a great culture at Catalans. There could be an argument to put them in third, but I, I will get onto third place and their just, justification for being there. But Catalans, over the last couple of weeks, as I said, wasn't too perfect against Hull FC and Castleford, although they dominated, but since then have been exceptionally clinical so Catalan's Dragons in fourth moving on to third place now and still in third place Hull Kingston Rovers they have been very strong very dominant the last couple weeks um, given their last opponent being London if they were slightly off maybe I could have justified moving them down and Catalan's up one but they were just in the driver's seat completely in that game um, they haven't really had any dips from what I recall in the last couple of weeks um, the only negatives that you can point out is that you know the loss to Warrington and maybe 12 points that they didn't gift to Huddersfield but 12 points that after such a dominant performance against Huddersfield that maybe is a little bit of an upset for them but they're like minuscule points given the last few weeks they've just been so dominant I think there is still a slight gap to the top two but the gap is very very small and I will repeat what I said last week I still need to see them play against Saints and Wigan I still need to see it however their next um, their next Super League game is, is against Catalans so they've got, they've got Lee in the Challenge Cup next which I would expect them to be okay but I think will at least be a good indication that 
they're still to be taken seriously as a top contender. And then the game after that against Catalans is huge. But I still need to see them play against Saints and Wigan. And that, for me, would help confirm who and what they are and where they are as a team. But Hull KR have been fantastic this season and will be in third in my power rankings. Moving on to second place now and still in second place, Wigan Warriors. I don't have too much to say on Wigan, to be honest, other than a great bounce back against Lee. I did expect them to win that game and fairly comfortably, but that was, you know, that scoreline was bigger than even I expected from my predictions. Wigan are just a class act all over. I did state before that nobody has been perfect this season. You know, Wigan certainly haven't been perfect, but we do know the kind of potential that they have in that squad. When they're on it, they can beat anybody. And that does include St. Helens when they are on are on top form. So they weren't perfect in that game, but you know, that fixture is one reason to keep them below Saints. And um yeah, I just I mentioned last week that the the gap to Hull KR has shortened a little bit, but there's still a gap there. And until as I said, Hull KR have played Wigan and or Saints, I can't move them yet. For me it would take a fair bit to dismantle this top two um, from the top two, but we're going to just a really powerful team all over. Great individuals, and as a unit, really, really exciting. Finally, in first place, and still in first place, St. Helens. Some people would have potentially thought after the loss against Catalans that, you know, it would be worth moving them down, but I think given that they... They beat Wigan only last week. Yes, it was a very close game. You could uh, certainly reference the card that was in there as well. I think in terms of opponents played, Wigan dominated against Lee, who haven't been a particularly strong team this year and have had their issues. And St. Helens lost to a Catalans team that has been on the on a major rise the last few weeks. And a lot of people take very seriously as a top contender. So... The gap between the two is minuscule, it is tiny, but I just, based on performances the last couple of weeks, you know, Wigan's dip also against Salford, I just, I can't justify dropping St. Helens yet, but that gap is tiny, so if there's, you know, from Challenge Cup performances, we'll have to see how they go, plus Super League um, the week after, when I do my next Power Rankings video, there may be a swap. But I just I can't justify moving them down just yet. They're still a quality team. They were just just outperformed, that's all. And and that will happen. Not a perfect team, but for me, still, as of right now, the strongest in the league. So that's going to be it for my round seven power rankings. If you have your own list, do let me know in the comments down below. Is there anything that you feel that I haven't really considered in this? What changes would you have made? Do let me know. But that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.